Welcome to Bryce's Bone Crunchers. <laughs> the hardest hits. I... The most vicious <laughs> violence. Brought to you by the bearded man himself. <laughs> Bryce Neshkov Castillo. The song was more Tony Tony Hawk than I thought it would be. <laughs> Hi, everyone. We're going to do weird things. looking for Tony, Tony, Tony. No, the, the, you should be doing uh, uh, high school football highlights with that. <laughs> He goes all the way, yeah. 20, 20 yards. And that's Patterson High's uh, uh, right. graham cracker. <laughs> graham. We got it. We got to pick the radio market. I'm saying Pittsburgh. Oh, for yeah, that's that's. Mm. No, but you could also go tri-state. I could see that being like New Jersey, Price, yeah. Philadelphia, yeah, Price, yeah, yeah. Pittsburgh, Long Island, Jersey. Yeah. yeah. Huh? yeah. Ew. <laughs> you know what? We rescind that offer. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you it wasn't a bit. <laughs> Mom's the investors, they, they thought that you belonged in this market. No. Uh, you know what? It didn't work out. Uh, hi, folks. You guys want to do some weird things? Yeah. Let's go weird. <laughs> Andrew, you ready to do the thing? You ready to do it? You going to do it? <laughs> yeah. I'm doing great. Man, Bryce. From, say, let's let's <laughs> take it from one. Help you pull this off. Let's take it from one. He's getting drag. He's getting wind drag and it's affecting his performance. <laughs> I need my DRS. Uh, for our, I don't know, is anybody listening to this just only in audio right now? See so, you. Yeah, I mean, a, a, oh, oh, this is before the show. Yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. I mean, All right. Yeah. Bryce, are you okay? Uh, yeah, no, I'm good. Are you good? I'm good. You good? Good. Okay, I'm good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. We uh, medical professionals are coming out to check for a concussion. Uh, looks like his eyes are dilating. He insists that he's good to play the rest of the game. Uh, my pulse is somewhere around here. I'm yeah. sure it's okay. around there. All right. <laughs> All right. Then I'll catch you in, Andrew, for weird things in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Maine, the clean-shaven one. Joined by Scruffy Justin Robert Young. Stay bristling. Bearded Brian Brushwood. Hey, the, the brush stands for toothbrush. And three weeks into his Old West pan gold handling, whatever you want to call it, you know, Bryce Castillo. Yeah! How's it going out there? How's it going, going out there in the gulch there, Bryce? I'm going to get that gold. <laughs> It's my gold. Bryce's look is like a classic Hollywood Western character that is morally ambiguous for racial reasons that we don't talk about anymore. There is one thing he needs, though, is he needs to be missing a tooth. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, I got a snaggle tooth. I got a snaggle tooth. No, I, I, I think you, you, you sell out the hero at the end of yes. the first act, but you you redeem but yourself okay. by the third. See, okay. that's the other thing is he naturally smiles just a little bit too much to look that grizzled. Yeah. And, and and that's why we're a little bit that's suspicious. Like, that's right. No one no one with a beard smiles this much if they're not evil. <laughs> it's, that either, it's, it's either that yeah. or Menudo's manager. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, that, oh, that hits a lot. That, <laughs> that hits too much. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I was trying to remember who was the character in Westworld that uh, um, the, the one that the, the man he, in black kept shooting would. Teddy? Um, not Teddy. Teddy's no, not Teddy. Uh, really not relevant or whatever, but now that I'm I can see, I can see him Clifton playing. College play. Lawrence. Lawrence. Ah. Ah. He just pop up everywhere, like every little town. He just popped up, like Lawrence was popping up somewhere. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that's not the most flattering, yeah. accurate analysis, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do also have like a light beard. You do the way that this man does. You do. Give me your favorite Lawrence quote, Bryce. Uh. I'm, I'll I put the law in Lawrence. <laughs> I love that line. I think that was the line. last thing Mitch McConnell said before he froze. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't laugh. Uh, no, no, no. The, yeah, our, 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 all of our bodies will fail at some point. It's you know, good. We're to all just we're laughing together. We're laughing with him. So, I need to, yeah. so uh, sometimes the headline gods just deliver it to us right like that. Like we don't even ask for it. Yeah. Florida man arrested by Coast Guard for trying to cross Atlantic in a human-sized hamster wheel. Oh, my God. Not only did I read this story, I went back and I watched the Vice documentary. This is fascinating. This is fascinating. Uh, what uh, is? I did not see this. 
uh, what, uh, uh, is it exactly what it sounds like? <laughs> it's all the headline of Rush. Yeah, I think that this is. I know there's a lot of criticisms of journalism these days, but uh, I gotta say, objective. ten out of ten, nailed it on this headline. <laughs> um, well, quite, uh, uh, here, let's play a fun game. Wait, why would you be arrested for this? Well, um, it's really dangerous, and as long as you're in the purview of the American government, they're trying to have you not die. Also, I don't know if you know this. There's a category for hurricane <laughs> in the direct path. Listen, uh, Mother Nature is not Mother Mother Nature is legal. It's a, you're legal to be Mother Nature. I, I, I. So there is arguments about things like that could be a danger to shipping lanes, blah blah blah. But I'm kind of like, I'm like ten miles out. Whatever, you know, you make it that far, like. It's 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 I'm, I'm going to, you know, swim to Cuba, you know, on a yeah. little and also a little pony. Float so wait, wait, if you hit this where, thing, where did, where did he get where did he get busted? And what's his full name? Because uh, Andrew and I might know him. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Reza I, Bellucci. <laughs> but, but, but before we find out where he was caught, uh, where do you think he was trying to get to, Justin? In Europe? London. Just going to jog across the Atlantic to London. Skip past mainland Europe. And then hit London, but avoid Scot uh, Scotland and Ireland. Hit, hit right through the channel. Get right through the channel. Oh, he literally paused, and a boat came up and said, Hey, fella, what's going on? And he asked for directions. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted hey, to buddy, do you sure... know which way is north? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to make sure he was going the right way. Um, here's a fun question. How mi Which attempt... Was this? Oh. <laughs> How many times has he tried yes. to get from where? Where was he launching? Uh, Florida, Florida. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm a Florida man. Look, yeah. they get around. Uh, uh, okay, so he's. Wow, that's a big northern jog <laughs> too. If yeah. he's trying to get to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also, like his ship, it looks like a buoy. No wonder someone stopped. It looks like a buoy. It's literally made of buoys. <laughs> uh, the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he uh, 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 London was his new quest. Okay. His previous uh, quest, the first two times, was only Bermuda. Okay. And, and uh, the first time, it was literally just a hamster ball with no structure whatsoever. Like one of them Zorbs. Yep. Like that you would like you'd you'd, you'd get pushed down a hill in. Yep. And and you might you might be tempted to believe that this guy you know just had delusions of grandeur, but. Uh, the guy had a horrific upbringing in Iraq, uh, Iran, where he was caught eating during fast in Ramadan and okay. was tortured, oh. came to America, oh. likes America quite a bit because one of the great things about America is you could do anything. You're for, not going to get yeah. tortured for eating during Ramadan. We haven't so, tortured people for that in years. Yeah. So the, the president's probably doing it right now. Re re real thing he did, um, inspired by the movie, the documentary Forrest Gump. Yep. He ran across America and then turned around and ran across America again. Okay. So he's already done that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So he, so he is he is a dis he is is a, a a a distance mover. Athlete, yeah. Yes. And uh and so then he uh, uh attempt number one, I believe it was twenty twelve, I think, uh just gets in one of those uh, you called him a Zorba hamster wheel. Yeah. Just starts going and uh uh gets lost in the Coast Guard. Uh, says, yeah, we're not doing this. And so uh, uh, they, they take him back. And uh, the second time he's like, no, I, I, I didn't have a fancy enough vessel. So he gets some trusses and some buoys, uh, brings two GPSs, has okay. a laptop, okay. quote, so he can watch movies when he's bored. Uh, I mean, look, there, there, are, there are dumber reasons to bring a laptop. He, he makes his own energy bars, which... Uh, uh, it's a good thing he has them because they were still in storage from the first time he failed his adventure. Sure. When he began his second adventure. That's shelf life, baby. That's in, value. I believe, 2016. Uh, and this time, uh, the, the, the fine folks from we, we are, we are We are looking we are looking at him right now. That, uh, uh, that dude will talk your ear off at a quarter deck. Yeah. Like that is among like the top 10 dudes that will just talk your ear off at a quarter deck in South Florida. That guy is on it. I don't even know anything else about him except for that. Uh, so the second attempt in 2016, tr just trying to get to Bermuda, man. Uh, <laughs> off he goes running. Uh, uh, there's footage. 
on the GoPro as the Coast Guard approaches and says, Hey, buddy. <laughs> so what you doing? <laughs> and he's like, I'm running to Bermuda. And they were like, yeah, you, you, you can't do you that. You can't do that. Still can't do that. <laughs> it's, uh, 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 it's costing us $150,000 to rescue you. He's yeah. like, I don't want to be rescued. Uh, yeah. And they're like, yeah, you're going to get in the state. boat. Thanks, Obama, but we got to do it. And then it's like, okay, and also, we need for you to not have this hamster wheel anymore. So... We're gonna shoot guns at it and sink it, and oh. he was very upset. He was like, "That was a, that was like a hundred and sixty thousand dollars of equipment." And they were like, "Sure was." Yeah. Please don't try to hamster Do wheel your again. way to Bermuda. So, flash forward to today. Okay. Uh, he's at it again. Yep. <laughs> this time running back at it again with the white vans. <laughs> run, running to London in a similar thing, but this time. He knows that he knows those sneaky tricks that the Coast Guard yeah. wants to pull. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they try to get close. He brandishes a knife and swears he's going to engage in self-harm. And then when they get closer, he grabs two wires and says, uh. I have a bomb and I will <laughs> blow this up. You can't and so do that. They back up <laughs> oh, and they no. wait, they wait another day and they come back and he's like, Hey man, I was just kidding about the bomb. Bob. And they're like, okay, well. So you're going to get better like, no, I'll still harm myself. I'm going to run to London. By the way, which way is London? Oh, no, <laughs> no, you can't ask that. And on the third day, they successfully got him out. Uh, you would think he would take a Garmin at some point. Okay. Uh, I, 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 have I gotten everything right so far as I as I read it this morning? I, yeah, I, you, you're ready to do the documentary. I, I, I'm going to throw this out here, okay? Uh, yeah, this is unsafe. Yes, this is stupid. We literally have government programs where we give people like meth pipes and clean needles for. Yeah. Well, so so here's <laughs> here's here's my question here, Florida man question. Let's say you really wanted to do this. Like, if could you just get your thing towed out beyond a certain jurisdiction and and then you're off to the races? Like, is is his only real uh, failure point here that? He's he's literally doing it from the beach, and he has to outrun the Coast Guard's jurisdiction to bring him back. I think I think that's so. Plus, also um, there is historical precedent. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, remember uh, uh, this week in Tech Network had Roz Rose, where this this woman just literally rode all the yeah. way across the ocean. Yeah. Hmm. Like uh, I, I I think if you, you you can do stuff like this. Yeah. Like the the Contiki was was a dude by himself. Like yeah, yeah I'm just gonna sail across. Cause yeah, because it, it's international water. After what, a mile, ten miles, something like that. Like, so what's he's their getting caught. Uh, he's he's probably launching from a place that is fairly populated. I doubt he's going out from someplace that that does not have uh, uh you know any kind of human eyeballs on it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and somebody's telling somebody and saying, "Hey, there's a kooky man with a crazy hamster wheel. You better come get him." Yeah, and I, I think I think the novelty is what attracted so much attention, and people were just like, okay, like if if let's say let's say scenario uh, two different scenarios that would be safe. One scenario would be a highly publicized, sponsored by Virgin Galactic Enterprise, where Richard Branson says. We support people who do. We choose to run in a hamster wheel, not because it's the easy thing, but because it will sell records. You know what? I was going to tell you to do the accent, but you just did another accent. So yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel like you nailed it. <laughs> uh, but then uh, that probably would have been safe. Uh, alternately, just quietly going in a boat that wouldn't scream novelty would probably be safe. But instead, he he appears to be a, 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 a human pinwheel <laughs> like a, it's, it's like well he, he uh, obviously, if you're in a boat you're like is the circus coming to town well i mean like, like you're not doing this because it's a, it's it's boring right you're doing this for the fact that you can say that you did it i ran from fort lauderdale or or wherever he, he, he left from to london and i'm the only person who did it but if you want to do that then you want to feel like you literally shoved off from the beach. You had, you know, one last a uh, 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 cheese, you know, w w one last plate of Pollo Tropical. You literally went over to the beach, started putting one foot in front of the other, and then next thing you know, you're going to be in jolly old England. 
But yeah, I if you're gonna make a crazy vehicle like that, you should also at least it's it's Florida. You're gonna find somebody that'll tell you out past uh, uh, Coast Guard jurisdiction and, and put you in international waters. Well, Appar- it- apparently in this instance, uh, per the Coast Guard, he was picked up about 60 nautical miles off the course the coast coast of South Carolina. Um, I guess the fact that they he wow, was so rest- he made it. He, he made he, it a while. I mean, there's no doubt that he has the stamina and the will to go. There's... And I guess if you have to go north, you would probably stick to the coast in well, case something happens before you need to get off. But but also in, in uh, his previous attempts, uh, the Coast Guard uh, spokesman points out, like, there are eddies that once you get caught in them, you cannot escape from. And uh, yes. And basically, it sounded to me like once he was and his efforts were on the radar of the Coast Guard and they saw what they perceived as a gross lack of nautical competence, uh, then it became a moral issue of like, are we going to are we going to let him keep going until until the news headlines say Coast Guard watches and eats popcorn while crazy man well, but, dies but in whirlpool still, i mean like all right so let's say they even went into international waters and they're like okay well we know this dude we know he's an american citizen so there is some element of protecting the populace that makes us chase beyond our jurisdiction at that point it would be voluntary for him to say yes no you want to know what i screwed up i have no idea what i'm doing like let me get on that i think you you can only really compel the man to get off his ship if they're in in their own jurisdiction, and, and I think I think they did. No, I mean he's it, it would technically be an American vessel, so they kind of. Oh, uh, okay. And, uh, well, I mean, did he have to register? Is it the SS? No, uh, I don't know, but I, I would think that I don't think the remember we had the Coast Guard in Vietnam, so I don't know uh, where the uh, the real limit goes because, like, even like so, I, and I think that if you think if you're a threat to an international waterway and you're not, yeah, I don't, I. I yeah, I, 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 I guess I, 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 would, I would, but I, would, I guess I would wonder then, like, what is that? What is the paperwork that makes the person who is like, oh, I'm going to kayak around the world or something like that? Where oh, having a support vessel, like, literally, if he had somebody that was going to follow him in a seaworthy support vessel, that's how you do. I was because I linked to Bryce. I'm like, let's talk about this guy that tried to float over a canyon with balloons. And, you know, it's David Blaine doing a stunt. It's like, ha. you know, but. We're here. They're having people who've done stunts like this, the the hamster thing and whatnot. But they have a support vessel. If you want to go kayak across the you know the ocean, you can do that. If you have a support vessel, so gotcha. if you get into harm's way, there's somebody who's going to save your ass. And it could this be this dude had a few. This dude had some power bars and a Gatorade bottle. He's probably peeing into. Yeah, yeah. He uh, 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 uh he also it sounds like from you know the backstory presented in that that mini doc on Vice uh, has. Uh, legitimate cause to mistrust government entities and probably just wants to go do things on his own. Yeah, but go to the mountains. No, just get a dude, get another dude, get somebody that's gonna, that wants to make a transatlantic journey and, and uh, uh, partner up with that person. If you think you can do it, I, I I definitely think uh, I will defer to people with more nautical information, but I would say it's a non-zero chance that the man was on a suicide mission because it's just impossible to not get caught up in a current or something like that. That would that would make you just die. Well, and uh, you know, you you don't know what you don't know, and he does know that he ran across America twice and that he can go a long way, and he knows that he didn't like being publicly embarrassed by his first two failed attempts, mm-hmm. so. I, I, I would chalk this up to unconscious incompetence and a refusal to, you know, play by the rules, I guess. Um, but that, you know, it obviously is, is, he has is, an extraordinary story. It is, so. it is a uniquely American spirit that says, <laughs> like, yes, we believe that you can, should, and will do the impossible so much that we're like, you want to know what? Gumption. That's what I think of when I look at this guy. Straight through this Category 4 hurricane yeah, that's well, right around well, the corner. Uh, it, I will say on a long I'm going to back his play. If he wants it, yeah. we show, get, let's get his man's GoFundMe. <laughs> like, I, I'm going to give I'm gonna give him $5 and I, a shout out to my mom for the next time that he does it. And he can do it the proper way that, that the fuzz doesn't need to, uh, doesn't need to get on him. They, they're going to be, they're going to be riding out to the coast with him saying farewell I'm like, let's just have a waiver. It's like, just sign this waiver. You know, a doctor checked you out. You're not crazy. You're going to do this thing. 
Because like I said, dude, we, we have programs to give people meth pipes. Yeah. Uh, you know, we let, you know, 16-year-olds ride motorcycles. <laughs> we, we've got a... Well, and and we, you know, we're having a, 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 I believe, a well-deserved chuckle. But you know, at the end of the day, chuckle. uh, At the end of the day, America was founded by crazy people. We are all the descendants of crazy people, and so that doesn't make crazy being crazy is is not. I mean, we're all David Blaine's. It's in our DNA. Yeah, and I and we bring the ones from other countries here who have that strain, and they 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 have it. So. I would say too, it's like, you know, we're in a world where some places are like, you know, we should allow government you know, in Asia. Like we should have this. It's like, well, you know, like if you're if you're okay for self destiny. I mean, it it's it's certainly easier to cross a mountain than it was two hundred years ago. Like who's I, to say I, that it won't be equally easier to cross a, a sea, a river, a o- an ocean uh, with your with some sort of personal powered Device. No, I, I mean, it, uh, it, it, it's it's probably possible. It's a matter of, of you know, doing safeguards and making sure you don't get way too far off track. And timing. I want to, like, see, like, like an po- article that's like, uh, you know, 1903, Kitty Hawk, Coast Guard stops two men on beach with strange contraption made of bicycle parts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and how we didn't get flight. Not well, that I think this guy was going to achieve that level. You can't go to the sky. People die up there. I, I, I think that's what <laughs> makes this such a fun, weird thing story is in spirit. I think we all agree. Go for it. But also, we're looking don't. at pictures of the contraption, and it has written on it, hope you don't sink. That's like, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't want him to do this. I don't want him to fall this person. But I think there's a point when somebody's so determined, you have to say. Well, and, and really, I think the even if we are backing him 100%, there have been many people that have tried a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, that have pushed the limits of engineering and personal uh, uh, perseverance and stuff like that. And a lot of them fail, you know, people who have tried to go around the world in a hot in air a balloon, balloon yeah. and stuff like R- that. Richard, like, Richard Branson Richard was Branson. into that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so like, you know, and he failed a bunch of times and, and it's dangerous to fail, but at least he had things, he had contingency plans. I, I, yeah. I would be curious to know what, uh, uh, what, 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 what the old boy could the old boys' contingency plans were well. You know they have um, the 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 Isle of Man race. Uh, I think it's a it's a year it's a yearly race. Uh, it's it's it circumnavigates the entire Isle of Man, the small uh, British island, uh, and it is very dangerous. And every year people die doing it. They do a bunch of different categories, a bunch of different types of cars, motorcycles, sidecars, a lot of really fast rural roads, and people die every year. It is not. Like it's 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 a surprise if no one dies. Even today, the the uh, the original Iron Man tri- triathlon in Hawaii was like it was conceived of as well. This will be absolutely deadly. Let's go. Right. Or the ultra marathon where you run all the way around Antarctica. Like sure, yeah, that's you know. that's insane. And and there are like there is space to give people who want to do things that are deadly. Self, so you know. You hear about the, yeah. you hear about the tough mutter that just happened in California. No. Oh, I know, I know the name. Uh, what, what is it? The Burning Man. Oh. No, well, there was that <laughs> the, the unintentional tough mutter. Tough mutter. <laughs> I, I talked to a friend who was there, and he goes, "Yeah, it's amazing. He just got back. It's amazing. It's like nothing else. It's just dry. Well, except this time, and, uh, <laughs> there was it, it was since he stopped early, so he had to pull his car out of the mud." But there was a tough mutter where, like, maybe up to 300 people got infected by some unknown virus. Oh, in the mud. oh no. So, yeah, a, a tough mutter is like a, a distance of obstacle course oh, that, uh, you know, is, is, is kind of like a, a more fun um, <laughs> basic version. training. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like a basic training for marathon people, like that, like that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, okay. but, but you feel like a million bucks afterward and there's a bunch of mud and it's kind of dirty, but, uh, do your own little Ninja warrior sort of thing. It's yeah. It's, 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 uh, yeah. Like some over the top, uh, stuff, but, but it's not like impossible. If, if you're, if you're someone who could run a marathon, you know, then you can, you can do that. But, but it, it does, it, it always does bring up an, a question of like, how, how, where do you, cause it's, it's, everyone's got their own personal mind, but like, how deadly of an activity 
is okay to 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 be permitted uh, to by well, the state or well, to watch and to enjoy. Like we talk about that Isle of Man thing. That's a race. That's a whole festival. People go out and watch it, knowing that probably people are gonna die. But but in in those cases, those there are organizers who figure things out, and they are aware. They take out insurance. They are aware some number of people will die, and they are willing to take the reputational hit. In the case of once the Coast Guard is aware of this and in their educated understanding, this is a straight up suicide that they're going to watch happen. Um, I suspect the calculus was very simple. Do we want to be, do we want to be the folks who just watch an American citizen commit suicide? Uh, you know, yeah. it's a, it's a bit like trying to stop somebody from jumping off the, the golden gate bridge, you know, because some people do survive. And so technically you don't know if they're committing suicide, but if you're a cop, you have an obligation to stop them. Uh, and, and I, that's what I would just, this is me steel manning the position, uh, in this specific inst- incident, uh, in, in the hypothetical, you know, I'm, I'm, let I'm in favor of, let, of letting people do let crazy stuff. Go. <laughs> what was his name? Uh, uh, I know, I know his previous successful thing Ray- was run with Raza, I believe. Raza, Raza, Raza Baluchi. R- R-E-Z-A. Raza. Raise the roof. Raise a Bellucci. 51. Uh, I'll tell you what. You are a you are a hero to all Florida, Raza, and we are behind you. And we hope way behind that you, the listener, are behind us when we say that patreon.com slash weird things is where you can support this show financially. Some of us uh, need it more than others. You know? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're just saying just, just uncertain times. Ah, uh, a lot of tumult. Patreon.com slash weird things. Uh, hey, look, you know, here's the thing about this Patreon.com slash weird things. A lot of people don't know. Hmm. You get early access to the After Things podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's where we talk about what it's like to be an independent creator, somebody who dares to dream the impossible, like, for example, running in a hamster wheel all the way to London. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We'll give you the the advice. He he would have made it past international waters had he listened to After Things. Oh, I'm certain. I feel I feel a hundred percent on that. Mm-hmm. So uh, head on over there right now, patreoncom slash things. If you don't, you're cursed for life. There's no law. Changing, changing topics here, gentlemen. Yeah. Have you heard about the bizarre golden orb found on the seafloor? I. Can't think of the last time a random mishmash of nonsense words has made me happier. Please say those words again. <laughs> so apparently um, a remotely operated vehicle, the Deep Discover, which is operated off the NOAA ship, the Okeanos Explorer, is going around, mining its own business off the coast of Alaska at about 10,000 feet, and it found a strange goldish colored what looks like it might be an egg casing or something can, they don't know what it is is it a dragon ball yeah, is there I, a little orange star in the middle of it can, can we get a sense of the size or are we talking about is it the size of a hamster ball somebody might have tried to <laughs> run to <laughs> london yeah. is there a bottle of gatorade in it <laughs> uh the the photos i saw i think it's like I'm like four inch wide they found it firmly attached to a rock, so it looked like an egg casing of some kind. Attached to a rock. So, so did they did they take a sample, or they're just staring at it right now? I think they grabbed it. I think they just plucked that thing off there and said, "Let's take a look at this." And when you say golden, uh, do we mean that it's just a kind of a goldenrod yellow, or do we mean Shiny? it appears to be strangely reflective? I. I I think Bryce could probably pull up a photo. There's a few on there. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, let me uh, take... Let's find a photo of this one, Bryce. Let's uh, go ahead and bring up the you know, visual. Hey, gold, it's valuable, but it's not like it just grows on rocks at the bottom of the ocean, unless it does. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. A mysterious gold orb uh, found oh. on the ocean floor off of Alaska. Is That looks biological to me. It yeah, looks I like- think it is. It looks like gold foil. Yeah. It kind of looks fake as hell. 
I, it, it also looks like it either is crack. Wait, hold on. That looks like a green screen. What is happening? That's with the rover. That's how. That's the that's the machine. I know, but doesn't it look like like this is just bad CGI? No, just that's the way the light. So they got this thing off it. They picked it up. Uh. Yeah, there is a. Uh, here's the link to the actual site from the NOAA because they talk about like, yeah, we found it. Found something weird, and then photograph it in a wet lab in somebody's hand and that's the last we heard of the crew wait for As reals? it was <laughs> no, no, no pirate no. treasure <laughs> <laughs> they found the key to davy jones locker yeah from the chat they're saying uh, bury me with my golden orb <laughs> the, a headline here uh, uh unidentified golden specimen captures public imagination well that's presumptuous <laughs> <laughs> what, what that it captures imagination public imagination how many how many people do you need before it classifies as public uh, imagination all right so we're getting a look of it in the lab it does kind of look like a golden tomato well and and it's deflated because i assume that down at pressure it it was able to maintain an orb like shape but then i ruptured when it got to the surface it looks like kind of a melted i, I to doesn't be honest it, it doesn't look like seaweed it looks to me like if you took uh, a mixture of copper and gold crayons mm. and melted it into a ball uh, and held it in your hands, uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, uh. Do, uh, do they have any clues as to what it is? This has to be just a, a, a critter of a curious color, like a like a uh, whatever the gold version of an an, an albino would well, be. Like uh, I'm gonna paste this into our good friend ChatGPT. Ooh, and it's going to tell us what it is. It, 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 it looks like you would dry that out, and that's where Goldschlager comes from. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's this is what, where they get gold foil. This is where gold foil is made. It the looks. Bottom of it the also ocean. looks like it has a face. It looks like it has a battle scar over its uh, left eye, and it's going, ah, Don't get away. steal my me. <laughs> Or All maybe right. like ready for some chat GPT speculation. So, so yeah. this is using chat GPT that where you can upload a picture and you can just say, Hey, what is this? No, picture, no, right? I, I, I just, I gave it the t article to say, you oh, gave it the article. Okay. Try that one too. So, right. so, so you, you, you put in the article and we are asking the wisdom of the, uh, uh, chat GPT to say what it is. So one is, it says could be a dead sponge attachment. Okay. okay. Boring. And second was these. coral. Could be some sort of coral, but I don't think the coral fits this description. Third, it says an egg casing, which I think is what we all kind of went to. Mm, I could see that. It does look like there's a hole, but it doesn't look like bite marks. It does look like a break, not dissimilar to a uh, to an egg, a, an egg hatching. So what, we think it's like from a fancy squid? <sighs> Oh, well, it could be like, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that have a gold sheen that aren't gold, you know, like a mica or, or a, a fool's gold or a pyrite or whatever. Um, yeah, that, I think because this could be amber. I wouldn't amber index on the gold. Yeah. <laughs> and not to mention, like, you know, you've got when you have lighting on these rovers, the lighting on them is always uh, it is always very particular because it's so fixed to the camera, which does sometimes make it look like CG. And it's also oftentimes they have an array of lights. Like that's part of the reason that the arm looks like it's CG on there is because it's being lit from so many sides. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all that glitters is gold and <laughs> shooting stars <laughs> break the mold. RIP. Oh man. RIP oh. Steve Harwell. Oh, that, that cracked like an eggshell. That looks like an egg. You know what? He just died. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> What are you? That. What are you doing, Bryce? This video. What are you doing? <laughs> I know it was a popular video. It was in Shrek too. And is in Shrek one. And damn it, he got me with the beard, with his beard-like quickness. <laughs> He's got a writing staff now. He does <laughs> all across his face. <laughs> so this was what? This was this like uh, this past week? So it's a little too soon to know exactly when. Uh, uh, what this what this dang thing is just yet? Yeah, I think they, uh, you know, I mean, they might be able to do some DNA sampling or something like that, and they're going to come out and say like, hey, "It was boring. It's a boring explanation, everybody." Mm. But until then, it's captured. We live. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, it, 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 it also appears to be in the original photo amongst similarly shaped objects, which makes me wonder if, uh, uh, you know, every so often you get a, a couple of recessive genes, love each other very much, and they decide to make an interesting variant. I got one more story here. It's been sitting here for a while. All right. And uh, I don't buy the explanation either. And I'm okay. going to tell you what the story is. There is some villagers in Peru who have said that they have been harassed by aliens. Okay. And okay. apparently seen aliens. Called Chileans. Some point this, <laughs> and they said at one point, they fly over, they're flying around, they see them fly over, they're wearing some sort of armor, and they say at some point they kidnapped a girl and they rise up and fly off. Uh, which, crazy. Like a, like a crane game? And a UFO catcher? A UFO catcher? So the Peruvian Navy police traveling, traveling to the isolated community, which is located 10 hours by boat from the Minas provincial capital, Iquitos, to investigate the strange disturbances in early August. Last week, authorities announced they believed, you ready for this? Mm -hmm. The perpetrators were members of illegal gold mining gangs in Colombia and Brazil using advanced flying technology to terrorize the community. So there this was- This is a Scooby-Doo mystery. Yeah. Let's see who you really are. Packs. They're using jetpacks to fly into remote regions to grab gold and are maybe harassing the villagers too. Okay, okay, so far, outside of the audaciousness of this plan, there's no reason it can't be exactly that. Like, unlike unlike uh, a lot of the UAP uh, talk where it's like, okay, uh, how are you traveling light years to get here? You have to invent methods for. That explanation, while highly improbable, well, is not impossible at all. Brian, you don't have to. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with you, sir, if I may. Okay. Uh, it is with the UAPs. It is not on the people who are claiming these are evidence of some unknown phenomena to provide an explanation for how they got here, or if they're aliens, or anything like that. Because I'd say that that puts, you know, if because it's it's more to say is this credible evidence of any? Sure, sure. But 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 I've, but I I I guess what I'm trying to express is it's a much shorter hop when there's a, a profit motive that I can understand, technology that already exists, and precedent no, uh, uh, to try to scare the locals <laughs> in order to keep them away from the gold stash with rumors of it being haunted. Well, but it sounds like they, this is, this oh, is there's now... there's video! There's it, video? It, it, it sounds like this is also now bordering on just pillaging that, like, not not content just to steal the gold... They're now, you know, buzzing the tower and stealing the women. I, I, I mean, that, I think we would agree that is a weird thing. Yeah. And oh, I'll unless you think they fell in love. <laughs> she wasn't kidnapped. She went off with her true love. Oh, uh, Rocket Man. Oh my gosh, this would be. I no, I think this it, is all B-roll. This is a B-roll video. Video. Oh. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm accepting this explanation completely. Now. <laughs> there is no, there's actual footage. There's footage in the beginning. Okay. There's, there's if, if there does, the, if there is a nugget of truth to any of this, this would be one of the most fantastical made for, uh, uh inspired by a true story movies that I would love. That's it right. might you, just, you just be skipped over the frame. Yeah. There's a isolated indigenous community. In Rural there, Peru. go back. Yeah. I, I, I don't know which go one. Okay. The yeah. guy on the flying craft. Thing. There's a okay. there's a lot there. of Okay. Yeah. Well that I guess we know we know the is this could be done. All right. I apologize. Imagine all right. This, this is actually something taken there. So this is ten miles from the mainland. That that's where the that's where the police went. So we're imagining that it's at least that. Uh, uh, if not possibly shorter, to get there for these gold thieves. I, I like that one of the criticisms of YouTube, how did this gold miner affect, uh, afford a $200,000 jetpack? <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, you'd have to have like a vault filled with some valuable substance to <laughs> trade for it. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute. All right. I, uh, are these I, things... I do, and I will tell you. 
I would just say I know, and I will not name the country, but there is a country that has a wingsuit team that is the best equipped wingsuit, you know, like doing in the flying parachute wingsuit team, the best equipped in the world because apparently their day job is flying cocaine across a border using wingsuits. Wow. Mm. Whoa. That's, I, I believe it. I believe it. We got we to gotta smoke them out. By putting wingsuits in the Olympics. Oh, and just see who and just see, see who, who, wants, who, who wins gets the, the gold, gold medal. <laughs> oh, Columbia again. <laughs> Congratulations. And the golden handcuffs go to <laughs> We do a so fake we Olympic go to... only for drug dealing related. <laughs> we create a fake brand called Gold Bull. <laughs> was that the Pan Am Games? Uh yeah, maybe it was. CAA Jetpack Aviation, their max flight time is like 10 minutes. Hmm. Um, How fast are they going? Uh, do, do you, I think, do you have, do you, if I you remember have, correctly, you have, I think Jetpacks... Do you have to charge when you get there? Well, no, uh, uh, Jetpacks, if I remember correctly, are just incredibly high-pressurized uh, uh, gas. It's like, it's like opening a, a scuba tank, and uh, the pipes are arranged such that you can fly for about 10 minutes, I, I think up to 60 miles an hour. So if you are 30 seconds in, 30 seconds out, you could jetpack in and out. Uh, and this is 1960s yeah, are, this technology. Is, yeah, this is 120 miles per hour. Um, they're like jet A fueled, whatever. So they're turbines. Okay, so this would be more advanced. Oh. But that, but it's, I'm, su I'm surprised we only have these small clips only because those aren't those things usually pretty loud? I would think that that would draw a, a lot more attention. Well, I mean, you're yeah, but they're, they're... Your business in some remote village. Yeah. It's not like, you know, like. Oh, okay. They're, they're just dropping in, saying, where the gold at? Grabbing it, putting a satchel, throwing it over their shoulder. Next thing you know, they're back on, I don't know, a boat. But they, actually, if they brought a boat, then why would they just not roll up with the boat and go get the gold? Maybe they got to get up a hill or something. Well, if. I, Damn, they, those is what the gold thieves look like. We're seeing like a crazy contraption with all these different uh, uh, tanks on it. Is it is it wrong for me to be considering a career in jetpack gold, in thie gold thievery? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I mean, yeah, number you one, know what? gold uh, thieves. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Starting now, uh, uh, the answer is it's not wrong at all. As long as with a wink, we all agree you're not stealing gold. You're delivering pizzas Wink. and then you could be the pizza thief. well number one it's this like is, well he did steal all our gold but he did leave this pizza this has raised the q rating of gold thieves a thousand percent in my book because previously gold thieves were just the uh, uh, uh thought to be friendly man on the trail that eventually robs you but but this this is high tech. This is rocketeer stuff. Yeah. Well, and uh, could you describe the friendly man on the trail who robs you? Like, no, I would imagine that he has kind of a red shirt. It's a little bit white. He's got earbuds in, black hair, uh, a a beard whose length he just figured out was the oh. right length. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that, like that. No, yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but five, five eighths, inch, five eighths. Inch. <laughs> okay, so so uh, uh, let's speculate real quick. If we assume that this is a normal <laughs> robbery, that could be, you know, you pull up in a boat and you just come out with guns in the traditional way. Um, uh, tactically speaking, if you pull up in a boat, then they know kind of what coast to defend from or yeah. whatever. But if you just fly in, now all of a sudden it's like nobody knows where you're coming in, and especially if you lean in with you know crazy yellow lights you know on your on your helmet that looks like an alien uh then then you add enough confusion that you could probably get away with it a few times do you think that they're like leaning into it like they're doing a little uh, oogie boogie man oh yeah no i think this is a scooby-doo uh, uh so operation. you think you think that they're I... that, 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 that it's not just their pros that there's like Meh, and for that crowd they're they're like oh aliens we need to make sense of this they're coming in saying like meep mop mark move yeah no like a, I... a, a it's a five person team and the fifth one his only job is to play the theremin as they come in Ooh. like I, I gotta give you the statement from the one of the village officials. He says, "These gentlemen are." And I assume this is translated. These gentlemen are aliens. They seemed armored, like the Green Goblin from Spider-Man. 
I shot one twice and it didn't fall. Instead, it elevated and disappeared. Guillermo Retiago Avia, a local leader of the indigenous Ikitu people living in northwestern Mines province, told Peruvian radio station, we're frightened by what happened to his community. Is Damn, so they, they, they're they strapped. They're, they're, they're busting back at these fools. Is there any... Dude ate two shots and was like, see you, nerds. Is there any chance that there's a bit of a translation issue? Because as recently as like 30 years ago, we, we it was common to talk about foreigners in the United States as aliens. Like, could it be that he meant like, these are foreigners and I tried to shoot one and he flew away? Well... You remember how we used to laugh at the goblin stories until we realized what the translation yeah. issue was that. Yeah. We were not laughing anymore. Yeah. So 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 at least there's a possibility that this is a similar situation. They do call he them does. flying aliens. I mean they are flying. Yeah. He does they're... look kind of like the green goblin. Like he has a little bit of an angled helmet. Well he's using like I think the hoverboard. I will just yeah. say whatever screenshot of, of Microsoft paint that they've used for this photo of a screenshot of a, of another phone is not helping any of us. Okay. Okay. You know what? Uh, uh, I, I feel a responsibility, a little bit of Occam's razor here. Uh, so the evidence that aliens stole the gold is that this small, poor village doesn't have any gold. Um, mm, and, and one woman, and but they, one, one woman was kidnapped, but they do have smartphones and access to, uh, Spider-Man I, I windows mean, 11. I wonder, I wonder they know who J Jonah Jameson is. <laughs> and I know they know he wants pictures of Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if a, <laughs> I wonder if there, uh, might be some Google reverse image searches that should be conducted. Mm. I mean that does look kooky. Looks it like does. a hoverboard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at the flyboard, uh the flyboard air, um, which looks like uh go to Zapata Z A P A T A. We're on yeah, we're on Yeah, we're we're, we're loading it now. And here. also I'm re I'm realizing if you're very wealthy uh in let's say in the drug trade you know, um, there's a reason that hippos are running wild all over Colombia now, mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem crazy yeah. that somebody might on a lark. Don't blame it on the cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there's a, they show some video of one of these guys flying the flyboard underneath. Like, yeah, this. Oh shoot, this looks exactly like that. I wonder if like if that photo we saw was there, but you can see there's frames at the bottom of the uh, uh, there the video the page for this you see the silhouettes look exactly like what that guy was what the other one showed um oh, we might we might be solving a mystery live yeah um i think we know the manufacturer i think we need to see how many were shipped to peru <laughs> <laughs> yeah that... yeah click on that with flyboard air wow and, and there's a little if you scroll down you'll uh -huh. see a for, video yeah uh, for the audio folks it looks like uh um uh, it just it looks like a lunar lander with uh, two boots, with boots that you strap into yeah. thrusters. Wow. wow, that was the video up there, Bryce. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there were the guys there. Yeah, but that's I, I, yeah, yeah, it's it, a very it is, slow yeah, to load it website. Is, yeah, it, it is. It is a chunky monkey of a website that is taking its sweet time and loading. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh they, yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. it. We found the culprit. We found the real killer. <laughs> So I wonder what the oh my god he's got a glowing suit and that's everything exactly it that's that's it, that's it. yeah <laughs> so what is the someone call Peru we tell him we got it <laughs> we cracked the case we got it. ladies and gentlemen we got him <laughs> so what is um what 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 is the the uh, outer limits of that device. I mean, I guess oh, the rain, I, I, the rain. I, yeah, I don't know why I'm obsessed with this idea of whether or not they are <laughs> taking they a boat. They crossed the English Channel with one. Whoa. Oh. That's 146 fair. miles, 10 minutes, 146 miles an hour. So, you know, in two minutes, you're where you need to be. You grab your gold and fly on back out. Wow. Wait for the 15-year-old village girls. They did the math, huh? I'm, I'm going to say. Damn, that thing can cook. Whoa. It's wow. Way he faster than burned. a jet ski. He just burned a jet ski. I, I am going to say that if you are a person of means where you have multiples uh, of these toys, then you might be the kind of, you might be you an might alien. Be a smuggler. <laughs> Triple's the best. Triple's wow. safe. In incredible. All right, Bryce, what does it go for? 
Let's uh, let's all we've we've earned it. I, I let's, I'm gonna say let's all get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You said what, Brian? I say two fifty k. Two fifty k. Maybe it's more. Andrew, what do you think? Uh, I'm I'm gonna say maybe higher, like three fifty four hundred. Okay. I'm gonna say a million dollars. Huh. But you can make it up in gold. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, please invest in our gold repayment plan. <laughs> yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you're really saving money. <laughs> yeah. Get it for $1 million or in a hundred easy payments of five ounces of gold per month. Yeah. It, <laughs> wow. Although not currently available for individual purchase, the Zabata Flyboard Air would retail for approximately twenty five thousand dollars. That's it! Wow! And if uh -oh. they're only and if uh -oh. they're only doing enterprise solutions, you uh -oh. get a whole. What's twenty five thousand dollars times not, four? <laughs> not hold it, hold it. Not available for purchase because apparently the founders have some novel new scheme to finance themselves. <laughs> Damn, twenty five k. That's incredible. Well, uh, and that's uh, that's a number i found on a website well is that a did i read that right can we do I, that as a commute uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'll tell you what uh, can yeah, we can I, we adjust our patreon i'm i'm now wondering which is safer this or that hamster wheel that <laughs> all the way to london <laughs> well and and oh interesting at one point it had been estimated at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars uh, a water hoverboard is estimated at six thousand on this website so it does seem like uh the the price is a little unknown, but it, I'm seeing another two hundred fifty thousand dollars on here. So uh, you might have to cut that four by uh by ten. Hold on, wait a minute. I'm trying to go to my house and see as the crow flies, mm -hmm. as the as the alien hovers. Yes. <laughs> well, I only live five minutes away as the alien hovers. Oh, and then you know it, it, this is it, it, here. Look, like you sell these to the military, and then we've got. Flying ground troops. Uh, put, put your put your address in there. I, okay. I don't want to. All right. Yeah. I don't want to ask you or <laughs> get it wrong. But you know, I mean, like that. That's very pl possible. Kind of plausible. I guess you uh, don't have a lot of good reasons to put a person up in the in sky in the sky compared to a drone. I mean, did you miss the whole part about the gold and the and the villagers? Yes. <laughs> well, I was talking about the military while you guys are doing the fun stuff. Like like the military could do could totally outfit people with these as well. Well, they did. There's like the Bell Aerojet or whatever Bell. But there was a lot of early stuff they did that like flying platforms is can be consistent like every decade you'll see the military does something like that and then it kind of reached the conclusion like yeah, it's kind of an easy target. You know, like, uh, yeah. no armor, whatever, just up there in the sky for everybody to see. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, and, and also nowadays, you know, we would probably use a swarm of smaller drones to accomplish the same thing, unless you needed to do things like, uh, I could picture high pressure negotiations where, uh, you, you need a human to be there in a difficult to access spot, um, Mm. Uh, like uh, uh, I, I, that would be a good movie plot. Is like uh, you're the oh, world's greatest a hostage, negotiator. A hostage negotiation story, but it takes place in the air because everyone's on their flyboard. Or or or, or it's like <laughs> uh, it's the world's tallest building, and they've they've locked everything down. We can't. Mm. They'll shoot down a helicopter. We have to infiltrate very quickly. I've get never flown one of these before. The Khalifa. It can. Wow. Yeah, get to the top of the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a fine plot point. You know, you get get well, somebody who's like, found, Whoa, I think we God. know the next Mission Impossible. I was going to say, put Tom Cruise on one of these. Yeah. Yeah. Get his old. I think it's this or a wingsuit. Suit. There. I, bet he, I bet he does. I bet he's. I bet they've already got it. I bet it's in the next one. Is yeah. him on a flyboard for some reason. Well, and, and nowadays with uh, computer correction being so precise, I, I would imagine that it, it could. I, I, I don't want to say totally safe because i can't imagine anything about this is safe but but safe enough that uh that somebody will take out an insurance policy and let an average joe ride one yeah put put some segway technology in there yeah figure out how to do a third wheel i guess that's the thing there's no the, the, training wheels the, the, the up in there. wheel a fly oh ooh. yeah well because that's one of the things is a, a lot of these devices 
they autocorrect. Like even if you try to screw it up, the computer's like, yeah, you don't want to do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you in the groove. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Ooh. These are these are gonna be the new Segway uh, uh, tours of the Grand Canyon. Instead of uh, you're gonna be you're gonna be down there with a burrow trying to walk the Grand Canyon, and then from three miles away you're gonna hear the high pitched whine and the giggling, and you'll be like, oh son of a, yeah, all right, here they come. I did it. I did a helicopter tour of the Grand Canyon. They're like, wait, no, helicopters aren't allowed. Well, American land, and they can let whatever they land land there, and so then you do a tour, and they basically they fly in the helicopter and land on a parcel that's owned by an Indian tribe. And they go, Oh, that's brilliant! Yeah. If if they made if they made like a the the Tesla version of this flyboard, they made a little electric one. The range is maybe a little lower, maybe enough to you know it'll it'll get you to work. Uh, you know, maybe a couple of days uh, without needing to charge it or charge it every day. <laughs> get you to work in a couple of days for a couple. Oh, of for days. a couple of days. For okay. a couple of days. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, would would you use something like this versus a car? Would this replace your daily driver if, I, let's say, price was? I, I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'd say wash. not with a car, but I can absolutely believe anybody who rides a high-powered motorcycle would not flinch to use this instead. Mm-hmm. All right. I can't figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> let's do a uh, pick, gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. I'd Thanks. like to pick a good as the crow flies <laughs> map generator. <laughs> this thing stink on ice. Uh, going back, taking another loop on our flag means death. Hot dog, is that show good? It's a good, good show. And it's neat to uh, revisit it a couple of years later because I tried to get my daughter Josie to watch it, but she was not into it. Uh, I saw a trailer for season two coming out, and I was like, hey, you want to give this a try? And and she really grasps uh, 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 what what it is, and what it is is just excellent. It's a very good show. Theater kids on the high seas. <laughs> yep, you That's, love to see it. Yep, yeah, it's great. Uh, man, it's been it's been a while since we've done the show, so I uh, I have a lot of things. Let's do a show that I discovered personally <laughs> on, your, on your own on my own. <laughs> Nobody told me to watch it. Not one person, specifically not the one person next to me, incessantly, to the point where I didn't watch it for a while. <laughs> and then I eventually did. And it's called The After Party, and it is on uh, Apple TV+. Plus. It is the brainchild of Christopher Miller. You know him from the team Lord and Miller. Uh, they have obviously done the Spider-Man animated stuff and uh, a lot, a lot of great, uh, great work from them. But uh, this is a whodunit wherein Tiffany Haddish, who is your uh, uh, main investigator, talks to each member of the party to get their side of the story. But each mem- each person's uh, story is in the genre vein of a TV or movie genre. Um, it's it's really good. It, it's it's one of those shows that you can tell uh, Apple doesn't care about money. <laughs> so, so they're just like, hey, one half of a creative team. What's, what's the show no one would ever make? And he's like, oh, I don't know. I have this idea with a bunch of different genres and it's a whodunit. Great. Who would you want? I don't know bunch of people that are like in movies or have big careers and they're like hire them all like (laughs) is there a way to make it very expensive yeah it's like like uh uh uh, what's their rate we don't care just hit buy it now and and tell them to be here in two weeks Uh, they're like give us like give us a list of leads and he sends like 10 people that he would like to if the alts and like yeah we're hiring them yeah yeah (laughs) all of them Oh, oh oh Oh, yeah. Thanks. You know, like we kind of we kind of want like a like a like a Dave Franco type, and it's like, sure, yeah, he's there. He's already there. He's waiting. He's waiting on set. Why? Why isn't the script a, a Dave Franco type? No, just Dave Franco. Just Dave Franco. <laughs> yeah, we want. Yeah, uh, uh, but it's all really, really. It's it's great comedic talent. Like not good comedic talent. Like great comedic talent. Mm-hmm. And the second season, which apparently is now uh, wrapped up on Apple TV, they were releasing it week by week. But not only did they get, again, a 
murderer's row of people that you've seen in other really, really funny uh, uh, television shows and movies, but they upped their cinematography like another 10 levels. Like the cinematography in season two is exceptional. And Paul Walter Hauser, who uh, just got cast in the new uh, Quentin Tarantino movie, plays a very funny role of a a, a a Reddit detective, somebody who likes to solve mysteries on Reddit. But in his world, he is the classic thin man uh, of black and white film noir hero. Uh, it's it's just great. It's 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 really really fun, very charming. And uh, Sam Richardson and Tiffany Haddish are the two leads, and they are great. Uh, I would I would love to see them in in other stuff. Uh, Sam Richardson should be a a movie star. He is great. Yeah. Uh, I got to pick uh, this. I've been watching this uh, partly because just because it's on YouTube, it's easy to watch on YouTube. Um, someone sent this into Cord Killers a really long time ago. And then it wasn't until I saw a bunch of clips from it on TikTok that reminded me I, we had heard about this, and hence I found it on YouTube. Um, it's the game show Ta Taskmaster. I don't know if you have heard about this, mm -mm. Um, but it is a uh, it, it's a comedy uh, panel challenge show from uh, uh, from England, uh, where they take comedians and they put them in uh, uh, in this little studio house and give them various uh, challenges to do. And, and then at the end of it, as, as they're doing it, they've already pre-recorded it, but then they all watch it live on stage and you kind of get a, a, almost kind of like a, similar to like Terrace House. Yes. You're watching it with someone else watching it. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, they have a lot of it People, on YouTube. No one's really ripped that off in America and somebody really needs to do it. The like, Terrace House thing? Yeah, just, just that concept of put people, either the same people or different people, just have them be watching it and just get those instant reactions. Like mm -hmm. like American reality shows are very uh, dialed in on on uh, the well, formula that we kind of created. Because you got to have a second show. You got to after the show. You got to have yeah. after the master. No. And, it's, and then it's it. one. Yeah. Uh, but they got a bunch of it on YouTube, including full episodes, um, which is much easier to find than uh, some of the other country versions. But uh, uh, that's that's my pick. Check it out. Taskmaster. Huh? Taskmaster. Cut faster. I watched it a segment that was really funny. Yeah. And they do a good job my, of like my, cutting it up. Yeah, my brother-in-law and his wife from India, they came to visit. And like, have you seen this? I'm like, no, I watched it, which was really fun. Thanks. So I got a pick. Go. Anybody else got picks? Is it my turn? It's I think your it's your turn. Um, I am remiss for not pointing this out. And maybe I'm not the only one here. Nailing a season is hard. Nailing a season finale is hard. But man, Righteous Gemstones. Oh! Yes! Might be their best season, which is saying something because I feel like I've said that every season. They 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 just they 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 don't miss. Every character, even the new ones, developed. You know, it, it came at the expense of like, you know, maybe we got less baby Billy, but we got baby Billy. We got a great baby Billy. Story. You know, we didn't, <laughs> it didn't overstay. We got a lot of great stuff there. I I, I just thought like, man, and and you know, BJ. Really coming, and he realized, like, man, he's such a great character. He went from this kind of annoying guy, like, he's such a great character, and they showed you that. Everybody, I just thought the story was great. Righteous Gemstones is, you know, that and what we do in the shadows, I think, are two of the best comedies on TV. I, 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 I've been I, holding off on yeah. shadows, yeah, and it's and it's I, great, it's yeah. great still. Yeah. Uh, like uh, that, I think, probably one of what we do in the shadows is better seasons so far. Um, I because I felt like I worried about that show being having a bit of a lull, similar to Righteous Gemstones. But I think they both are. You're you're right, Andrew. They they both are pulling through. And I think that as as writers or as people like as somebody about to start writing a sequel to a book very soon, the thing that I think the best stuff ever comes out of that's clear when somebody says, "Okay, if this is true, what else is true?" Yeah, you know, Empire Strikes Back sequel that surpassed the original perhaps why well if this is true what else is true if this is if this is there's a 
you know, empire, there's this, and they're powerful. What else is true? Well, they're going to be big, and they're going to have these things. They're going to have this. They're going to have that. Like, how do I, how do I make, how do I paint more into the universe instead of just revisiting it? Godfather too. If this is true, what else is true? Well, if we had this great character in the beginning, he had a backstory. What is this? If this is where we are now, what else is going to be true? And so I think that these stories just take their characters and go like, I think, I think what we do in the shadows is cool because there's Garamo's journey. And it's yeah. not like we're going to put him in a time loop. No, we're going to take him a little bit further on the journey because it has not been there. You know, if this is true, what else is true? And meaning what other conflicts are there? And I think both of those shows have in common that they take their drama and their characters really, really seriously in a way that comedies often, you know, you have a fairly simple idea of, you know, who a character is. Well, this character, the central conflict is that he has a crush on the receptionist and, and the receptionist is super sweet, but she's in a bad relationship and, you know, maybe they're going to get together. Will they, won't they? That's kind of the the extent of the drama element of it. And the rest of it is them getting into episodic conflicts and, and having hijinks beyond it. But almost everybody in both of those shows have larger character motivations and journeys and, 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 and stuff like that. Obviously what we do in the shadows narratively is a little bit easier because you can always just bring some element of their, you know, thousand years on earth, uh, uh, you know, back at, at a moment's notice, but gemstones for a show that is about fairly awful people, they've done such a, a really impressive job of making you care about them and love them while never thinking that they're anything other than what you thought about them when you first, when, when, when you first saw them, they, they, they have these moments of growth and moments of humanity that you feel good for them. But when they come back next season, you have no doubt that, uh, you know, that the kids are going to be spoiled. And uh, uh, whenever we go back to the eighties, uh, John Goodman is going to be doing something that we're like, wow, that's kind of uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, I, I would say the shows also have the common characteristic in that the shows themselves you could portray as cynical, uh, but the characters, it's every single character is not cynical. Every yeah. single character truly believes in the motivations as they've they've laid it out. Like Nandor, Nandor has a blind spot for uh, Guillermo, but but it comes naturally. It's not because he's trying to be a total jerk, you know. And Guillermo really does want to be on this journey. And and uh, it, same with all of the gemstones. It's like, uh, especially when you're dealing with issues of faith, uh, it's so easy to um, portray them as 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 people disingenuous but it's it's almost as though both are shows where there's only heroes there there are no there are no uh, uh, cynical vi villains uh, uh, it's really what i like about gemstones is that that you know maybe they'll explore doubts in their faith or something at other points but that, that it doesn't be little at all and, and 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 you could tell there's i think you know there's a running story involving uh, characters uh uh you know, life path that is going to become in conflict with probably what, you know, a lot of the supporters of the gemstones feel is appropriate or right. That I think is sort of thing. They kind of have this thing they've been developing slowly. And I think that may come to a point where they have to question what it, what it means to be of people of faith. But I think that like, yeah, they, and I think, I think the fact that they've never been cynical about it is going to make that more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and a monster the, truck. Oh my God. Uh, that the Redeemer. That is, I may have listened to that Dolly Parton cover of Shine uh, uh, an awful lot. Yeah, great, great, Never. great, great song. Um, fantastic cast. Steve Zahn, just all he does is show up on television shows and just kill it. Drama? Sure. Zahn will do it. Comedy? Oh, yeah. Zahn's hilarious. Steve Zahn, five stars. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Gentlemen, it's been weird. <laughs> Yeah. Very cool. All right, we'll do some uh, after things here in just a moment. Uh, 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 uh. I actually need to get take a. I'll be right back. Take a short break, everybody. Everybody, go take a short break. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, if you insist.
Hello, folks. It's still Friday. And thank thank goodness it, 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 it still is. Uh, gonna do after things here in just a moment. I uh, We did marbles last night. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Marbles.win, the website. Uh, 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 it was great. It was a lot of fun. Always fun doing marbles. It's become... It's becoming... Like, it's... I don't know if it's because I'm caffeinating myself right when, right when the when the, when, when Marvel starts, but that 90 minutes, man, it just goes fast. And maybe it's because I I've tried to make it go a little faster, you know. Um, like I brought some of the there's a timer. I brought the timer down by 30 seconds. Um, and so now we're now we went from like about an hour 45, two hours to like we're pretty steady at about 90, which is good. I think that's a pretty good length for kind of an appointment show. And then by being, by only being that long, then doing it week after week after week is not, uh, 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 doesn't, doesn't feel as, as heavy. You know? Uh, I, I, Justin. Yeah, dog. What, what, uh, have, ha, have you found this, uh, when it comes, has this to, ever happened to you? Has this ever happened to me? Uh, have you ever, I've been, uh, uh, uh one of the things with marbles, is, yep. a, is I, I've, I've shortened up some bits of it. I've tried, I've streamlined it a little bit. And so now it's gone from taking, eh, it used to take about two hours, a little under two hours to now it's pretty much about an hour and a half. Yeah. And that, just that 30 minute difference, I think A, makes it feel super, super quick. Like it finishes really fast. Um, but also more, uh, uh, easier to easier to maintain every week less less like i need a yeah. break as often um i know you do some m streaming uh, uh 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 some shows that are kind of streaming first um or or live first do you find that 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 some that even like 30 minutes uh is a big uh a big step when it comes to how long your streams i i don't know if if 30 minutes is per se a gigantic difference. I, I will say that everything has a length it wants to be. And that finding that is better for you. And and sometimes it's hard to reconcile that with uh, what you think is like the necessary thing that you should do. Yeah. Like there are times where I'm, I'm like, oh, you know, a PX3 episode comes in around 30 minutes where normally they can be an hour and I'm like, oh no, I'm like, I'm, I'm ripping people off. Right. Everyone's going to hate me. Uh, and no one has ever written in. Never this asked. is totally in my head. Right. Uh, but at the same time, like, you know, it, it is what it is. I don't know if, if, if 30 minutes is the best time. I don't know if, um, mm -hmm. if, if an hour is the best time, but, uh, you know, at a certain point, it is what it is. But yeah, I, yeah. I would say yeah. It could, if it feels better for you, it does. Then like, that's then that's important. Yeah, because uh, uh, you know I'm, st I'm I'm standing. That was a big change over the past like six six months or so. Is is uh, getting getting the blood flowing a little bit? Is, is I'm standing. Yeah, Annalisa, uh, uh, she she gave me a hand me down uh, standing desk adapter. Oh yeah, and uh, and it's great. And, and I can stand or I can sit and, and all, but I like standing, you know, gives you, gives you some energy while you're doing the thing. Um, um, but it's also a lot of standing. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's two long 45 minute plus, uh, halves. Um, yeah, man. Well, I think that, that, uh, yeah, finding, finding that sweet spot's important. Yeah. You know, all these stupid Thank stuff. You for that Why insight. couldn't I, uh, couldn't I find this? As the crow flies, can't you just search for that? Doesn't it? Is just it just on on maps? On can maps, you just it do should it just do yeah. that. Yeah, like if I go, hold on, let me go to my. I'm gonna type in my. Okay, hold on. Well, I can't get plane directions from here to my home. And when I can search, you, should you just try Wolfram Alpha? When I search, it gives me a mile counter. It it yeah, gives Justin. me. A, Oh yeah, let me use Wolf from Alpha. From, yeah. Oh yeah. We are in the future, guys. We are. We are. Oh, interesting. The search gave me gave me nine miles, but then uh, the listing tells me thirteen miles. 
So I think the search is uh, a direct distance on Apple Maps. All right, folks. We're going to do some after things here in, uh, in a minute. In a minute. Everyone's getting their, getting their messages and. No, we can. Done. Yeah, no, I don't want to ruin everything again. Like I already. Too late. F word. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, no, that's driving distance. Dang. Yeah, it, it, it used to give you as the crow flies. It used to be. I seem to remember you could just draw a line. I would tell you. Did Wolf from Alpha give you the answer? I'm um, I'm trying to figure out. I thought I was gonna be able to do it with ChatGPT, and then then I was looking for the plugins. Now I'm just at Wolf from Alpha. That's what I would do. It. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, convert distance from. Oh no, no, that's I spelled all that wrong. Distance between Austin, Texas Capitol, and San Antonio Capitol building. All right, Wolfram's cranking. Oh no, this this can't be right. It went to the wrong place. Convert the distance from Austin. <laughs> it went from Austin, Texas to. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say the thing because it's my actual street name, oh. but apparently that is a city in uh, uh, Telangana, India. <laughs> oh. Here's one. Okay. Distance from Austin to San Antonio, 73.74 okay. miles. We're going to figure it out later on whether or not we're going to get our drug dealer on our scooters. <laughs> and whether or not I can commute. <laughs> but didn't that have it there? No, it, it na natural language. It was, it, I just don't want to figure out how to ask it appropriately. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, jeez. <clears throat> yep. Yes. I got a similar ridiculous result. Never mind. All right. Uh, ready to do after things, Andrew? I am. All right. Then I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Oh, hoy, hoy. That was me flying past on a jetpack. Bryce Castillo. You forgot about the dollar event. <laughs> you forgot about the dollar event. You about the dollar event. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, how are we doing? Good. I feel the need to correct the Doppler effect because then you'd have to adjust for pitch. Yeah, oh, oh like, no. Oh, geez. forgot about the Doppler effect. They'll just do this all day together. <laughs> They're like two little Furbies. They'll just keep the going. microphones don't have to be don't, here. No, they'll just, just be Dopplering each other <laughs> until the camera. So, uh, next, next week, Apple is uh, apparently going to unveil, believe it or not, a new phone. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <clears throat> it's been so long. Uh, I've got my prediction here in the phone. Uh, mm, mm, a faster than ever processor, better battery life than ever, and the best phone we've ever had. Wow, that's a that's a big call. Oh, best camera. So, oh, uh, sorry, best camera. Yeah, sorry. It's the best. Phone. Even I lost interest in hearing the bit for <laughs> a million And the time. ability to take those videos of your family that make you look like a detective whose family was killed <laughs> in Apple uh, VR. The 3D vision for yeah. once. Oh yeah. It uh, it does also it also looks like maybe there will be a bit of a price bump again. These things these dang things are they're so expensive. Just this buy is, a whole wait, thing. Is iPhone 15 Pro Mac. Pro Max. 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 Oh, sorry. My eyes are gone. <laughs> yeah, you would have seen it if you were reading it on your iPhone 15 Pro Max. I would have. Yeah. It, uh, what do, how do, how do, how are you guys feeling about cell phones? Because obviously, because they have, they have, certainly have changed a lot in 20 years. Um, like I am still on my iPhone 12 Pro. Gross. I, I think I am 
as well. I think Ew. and like three years behind. Yeah. And it's like touching I, duty. Well, and but but it is shockingly old. I mean, it was not long ago that it was like just upgrade the phone every year. Just yeah. get a new iPhone every year. That's what I do. But I don't want to keep paying. No, I pay all year. Six hundred dollars every I, year. I didn't like paying once. <laughs> right. I like paying all the time. One and, and done. Pay... Remember how much fun it was to buy your first iPhone? What if you had that joy every single every month? Every single month. And you that's always, what I do. It's and sad. I just You're get a new paying for an iPhone. I just get a new phone and and I'm better well, than most. I mean, at this point, I think I'm I, I think I'm two years into not having a case. And I'm and at this point I'm just kind of fascinated. To see how much longer I could yeah. go. No case is awesome. No case is the best way to go on iPhone. Yeah. It's the best way to go. All right. Oh, okay. dog. So <laughs> do you know what the oldest phone is that they did a security update for? Security uh, update? They, uh, so, they, so how long they have been pushing Apple? security updates for older tech? Yeah, like what? How? Like what's the oldest phone? Because like they may not add features, but they'll still push through. Hey, I really hope Bryce is, is not... In, in there, I hope Bryce is a gigantic hacking target. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say the <laughs> the iPhone eight, uh, eight right before they did the ten. They, they uh, 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 there's a wonderful Wired video that that addressed this uh, among other typical questions people have. Um, I want to say they go they update to eight years back if I remember correctly, but I don't know if uh, I'm confusing that for the iPhone eight. Brian, you are correct. The iPhone 6S back, which came out September 25th, 2015. They put out a security update in July 24th, 2023. There was a security update for the iPhone 5S in January, and that phone was 10 years old. Wow. Yeah, so, and, and, uh, you know, th this is something that it, it is more feasible and realistic for them to update security patches on old tech because they don't have as much old tech in the same way that Android does, which they've been putting that OS on any hardware that wants to do it. So it is, it is harder to solve all of those, that galaxy of problems. Uh, uh, but it, it, that's the benefit of keeping everything in the walled garden where you control everything like Apple has made, you know, a, made made enough money to cover several countries uh, uh mm -hmm. the, you know enough money to, to cover a continent uh based on that strategy i mean right now the the uh, uh not this is not uh, this is gonna make it seem like i'm making this like into a phone a phone war thing and i'm not okay cool go ahead green text but start it for for a for android the thing right now is oh the google pixel phone the phone that google is making mm -hmm. they won't even commit to like three years of of Android updates or like they'll, they'll only commit to three and not four or something, something shockingly short for Android, which already has what I would consider to be update problems with the, uh, uh, in the wired video that I was citing earlier, they, uh, they cover just a, 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 a rogues gallery of classic questions. Like, is my phone listening to me? And then it explains how, uh, no, it can't because it, it uh, when you say the trigger word for um, uh, hey blank, uh, it doesn't even pay attention to the word hey. It only activates when it hears the first syllable of, of the name of the device, and that activates one processor. Like, like it can't, like, it explained how physically it can't listen to you all the time because it takes too much battery and processor power, and it values uh, its reputation for long battery life. And then it uh, uh, breaks down on the Android side, uh, uh, it depends entirely, the commitment to updates depends entirely on what the provider is on it. Um, it, it was, it was a, it was a, a good, uh, a productive waste of 15 minutes of my time this morning to have all those classic questions get, get answered in a plain spoken way. Hmm. I, so I understand the, 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 the tech behind and the, and the battery consumption for things that listen, particularly like background listening to see if like a, a voice comes up or whatever like that. And I understand all. Uh, ever since the Rohammer attack, ever since that, I look at hardware and I look at stuff completely differently because you can set out to do it. And I do not think that Apple's trying to plant stuff in the living that very clear. Uh, as we saw with the San Bernardino case where the government wanted them to create or engineer some sort of backdoor or whatever, and Apple steadfastly refused. Um, 
they are, I very much believe they are in the business of security and they do not want to put compromises in that they can avoid. That being said, the NSA and certain government orgs have super, super, super smart people, some of them even at the chip fab level. And so it's kind of like, I'm like, yeah, if everything behaves the way that we expect it to, this is true. But we often yeah. find that things, yeah. Yeah, and I think that that, that's, that that is a really, really good way to put it, that if you are worried about a phone listening to you, worry more about the NSA and less about why... Why you got served my, the ad. My best friend and I were just talking about purple dresses, and then I went on Instagram, and they were selling me a purple dress. Yeah. Like, like, you live in the same city, lady. Come on. It's, it's do, you, do you remember the story about the seal that was in this American embassy the Russians gave? Like they, The Russians, the Soviets gave uh, some ambassador, I don't know if it was in, it was in Moscow or whatever, but like it was the, the children's youth, it was the old socialist youth, Presented him with this wooden emblem of the U.S. flag, like the you know the American emblem, and so they hung it up in the office, and you know it was seemed innocuous, whatever. There was no cables running it from it or anything like that, and but there were some interesting little leaks that came out of that uh, embassy, and eventually somebody got very curious and they X-rayed it and they found. Basically, two metal plates that were very close to each other. Like wow. You can see right there, there's a thing right down there. There is no power. What they could do is they could aim a microwave antenna at it, which would then apply power to those plates. And then when you spoke, they would connect and become basically a transmitter and would transmit what people are saying. That's amazing. It's a Trojan you know horse. The part is? It got a Trojan horse. Will, do you, and we know the name of the man who invented it. His last name is Theremin. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's the right. The Theremin musical device. He was the one apparently who invented that for device for like because he was Russian. He created this thing based on this transmitter. Very brilliant. Work for spy ops, apparently. And so, and when you look at that, and Rohammer, for those who don't know, it's basically an attack. People realize that on certain microprocessors, there is one row of, you know, like transistors, it's right next to another row, and it's super, super close to each other, and normally they don't interfere. But if you send from the into the insecure area, like you pulse it a lot, send a lot of you know, you know, whatever like requests, it can actually flip bits in the secure area and cause it in a way to basically affect it and allow you to hack it or do other kinds of things. And that's one of these things that you and, can look at the specs for this all day and never think that that was vulnerable. Am, am I right in remembering? I, I thought I read somewhere that there was tech that just by listening to a hard drive. Uh, a, a plate hard drive doing its work it, you could reconstruct stuff similar to the way a laser microphone can you you aim it at a window and as people talk the window vibrates and you using light waves you're able to reconstruct that yeah i think that would have been would have to have been much 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 older because the 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 data rate between that and what you can actually pick up with like audio is there but there's stuff like keyboards like we know that like you can probably tell from a keyboard where somebody typed right yeah. there's a lot of little things like that there, there is a lot there's just, just things you just don't think about you're like no this doesn't work like well because you take the iphone it's like ah the cam the 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 microphone's disconnected okay can is the camera still on because my facial detection thing is it aimed at a light force on the ceiling and every time i talk is there a slight vibration i mean there's just you just can't say, ah, it's foolproof. It's like, yeah, you can build it and you can disconnect stuff. But we found that, you know, there's cases where, I don't know, like like some sort of genetic algorithms or something, I remember, where they basically like disconnected the timing circuit, but this device was able to pick up the RMF from something nearby and could tell the time. You get these weird sort of like, you just never think about it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So throw away your phones, folks. <laughs> well, or, either that or or just decide at all times that you're living your nope. life in a way that you don't mind <laughs> people <Throw> knowing. <laughs> I'm trying to find the story about it because I, I am, have lost some information about it since it happened a few weeks ago. But one of the panels, one of the things that they had uh, shown off at DEF CON was, was, very, was similar. They could use a, uh, a camera to look at an indicator light, a power indicator light on a device. And because of the way cameras, uh, you know, a camera doesn't take a, f a whole frame at a time. Technically, it takes 
pixels in a row, uh, just really, really fast. But apparently, if you, you, if you unfocus the lens in a certain way, you can use one frame of a, of a video file as every individual pixel being a reading on the brightness of this LED. And so the, sh the short version is they're able to uh, uh, use just a video camera uh, to look at, at an indicator and can pull, they were able to pull things like secure keys and strings that, that, were, being that were being used on the computer that otherwise wouldn't have any reason to be on the indicator other than it's just the data passing through. There, there's, uh, I think this is, out there, but a, a hack that uh, uh, our friends in the in the hacker community were were, were working on that uh, would allow you to exfiltrate data via the numlock key. You could get things off of there by the numlock key being treated as a binary uh, indicator. That, uh, that, that was actually a plot point that, like so many things, was fiction that was made uh, flesh. Uh, in a Neil Stephenson's Cryptonomicon, there's a character who um, is trapped in a cell, and he is aware that they're able to see everything he types. And so he just types circuitous code, but the only thing that, you know, but along the way, he hopes he doesn't notice that he's set up Moore's code to give the real answer. So he finally types give me the coordinates and a bunch of things come up that are not the actual coordinates. Yeah. But meanwhile, the numlock key uh, uh, displays it in uh, where only he can see it. Mm -hmm. But that, that is a, a, you know, really, really, really old tech that nobody's ever going to change the numlock key because there are standards for keyboards and stuff like that. And so as long as that exists, then that will always be a port for which you can just shovel stuff out. But I, Oh, Oh, interesting. Because I could see a world where you have, like, you know, you've, they, they, some people have those, like, uh, phone charger uh, condoms, right? Little, you, yeah, like, uh, they basically gonna, RFID. Alert, well, they let, they let you know whether or not somebody's trying to grab data or not, or whether it's just... Which, by the way, one, one of, the, one of the, the, the guys, great dude, MG, he sells the OMG cable, um, which you can, you can look up, but it is identical to an iPhone cord. Uh, but you can load it with payloads. So once you plug the, the cord into your uh, laptop to charge your phone, the loaded end is the, the, uh, the USB end. It loads whatever payloads. So one of the things he sold this year was one of those data condoms that you would give out to people saying, hey, a lot of crazy stuff out there. Don't get hacked. If you're going to plug something in, oh, wow. use this. Was it a fake condom? Uh, yeah, it's a payload. Nah. So you can load it with whatever you want. So you, uh, you're, you're, you're selling them on the idea. Uh, well, one last you're thought on the ability, you know, that the data kind of radiates all over. Uh, I want to say it was 10 or 12 years ago, and I'm surprised I've not seen it surface again. And I tried to poke around to find it, but, uh, there, there was an article about how, um, old old video of things basically by and i'm certain we've talked about this before but certain just by turning up the contrast enough you could see what to the normal eye would normally look just like a baby uh those small differences could be amplified enough that the baby would pulse at exactly the baby's heart rate which all of a sudden opens up a whole series of biometric body readings you can see politicians uh, uh, using that, all of a sudden you could watch their heart rate increase, Dang, even though they're yeah. keeping a poker face, uh, and be able to see that stuff. When I was in China leading the airport in Shanghai, there was a young woman out there who was very friendly working for some company, handing out promotional USB drives. Yeah. <laughs> and she handed me one and I stared at this thing and I'm like, whole like i was tempted to just go buy some like dummy laptop just to see what was in there because i'm like like seriously like you're this you're like this obvious about that what oh, you're yeah. doing to like act? i mean it was just i'm like i'm like who who goes and plugs this thing in but like, people do that's why they do it you know like it'll be Chinese the type of people who have... take that who take it right it'll be the people who yeah i'm saying take yeah it. well yeah i yeah i mean i just i got it because i'm like wow like, here's a piece of spyware do you want it like i'm sure but well, uh, and, and I was, 
if you're doing it at scale, you could have a uh, an end goal that is not to find out what's on your computer, but basically, let's say there's 10% of the populace that is like, you know, just doesn't care, like I have nothing to hide, whatever, they'll do it. But then the real goal is to create a very effective zombie botnet that could be used uh, for, for other stuff. I, yeah, I mean, I think this is because they're business travelers. I think the, the goal is that you then, you just, you want to get keys, you want to get passwords and stuff. So basically, you know, if I worked for IBM or something like this and I go there and I take it and I go plug it on my computer, now all of a sudden they have a key logger in there. I think that was purely, I think it was purely, I don't think they were trying to do a zombie. This was a really, this is somebody in an airport, obviously with the government's permission to go do this, uh, did, literally trying to do fishing. And, did, did you read about the recent uh, epiphany and the details are, are scant because they want to keep the investigation ongoing, but a number of very high profile crypto wallets have been broken and uh, a massive amounts of money has been stolen. And it was confusing to this uh, 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 this research agency what the the linkage was because all of them were performing what were considered to be best practices. And mm -hmm. the realization that they published on this week was, yeah, as best we can figure out, these people are brute forcing the the encrypted data from the last pass leak that happened a couple of years ago. Uh, and these people, uh, you know, uh, it technically, uh, they, the actual passwords were not available, but if you have that data set and you identify high profile targets and you uh, spend enough computing power, then they're on the other side of it. And they're just, they're, uh, uh, just checking millions, millions and millions and millions of crypto is just being stolen and there's nothing to be done about it. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, and at the same time, there's a bunch of crypto that's uh, presumably just locked away forever, you know, in wallets where you lose the password or, or I, yeah, I, I think I linked this on our Patreon, uh, one of these past weeks that we were off, uh, about a big crypto exchange that lost the password to one of their wallets and for years, months or years had to like borrow and buy more crypto so that they could run transactions for folks. Um, even then when they, they, they etched it, they etched it on a steel plate and they still lost the code. Where'd they put the plate? That's what I'm saying. In the wash? The dishwasher? Yeah. The shelf? Some of these, some of these we lost it, we can't find it, are just inside jobs. Because some of it is just literally, there are three people running what you think is a much bigger thing and person B and person C are like, you know, we could do this and we could just say this or we could do that and because there's been a couple times where that's actually been like, oh, yeah, we don't know. So sorry, everybody. We're doing our best. And, you know, see you from my island in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you want to jump into picks? Yeah. Um, here is a rollicking adventure for everybody. Uh, the year is 1994. And Newt Gingrich is leading the Republican revolution to take the House for the first time for his party in over 50 years. The new book, March to the Majority, written by Newt Gingrich, out now, just released it. Took him a while to write it, apparently. Essentially, it's Newt Gingrich's uh, a political memoir. It is very Newt Gingrich. There are a lot of very, very interesting and analytical ideas but most interestingly, he kind of admits, probably the most Newt Gingrich story in it, he uh, was telling the Republican National Congressional Conference uh, uh, how they should run their national strategy. And uh, they uh, were listening to him and then eventually told him, Newt, we're not answering your phone calls until you win a race. <laughs> he had he had lost two times running for Congress in Georgia, but that did not stop Newt Gingrich from calling the National Republican Congressional Committee and offering unsolicited advice. He obviously eventually went on to have a very very high profile run in Congress and and uh, did take the majority. But he is uh, uh, honest about his own intensity, which uh, uh, I think for something we're we're. You know, he doesn't need to to list his own flaws in this particular book uh, was interesting. So I, I do think if, if you are if you're a campaign 
fan, mm. if you are if you are interested in the like X's and O's blocking and tackling of of politics, not necessarily the the you know uh, passion of of an idea, it's well worth reading because he is a great campaign mind and uh, uh, he he lays it all out in this book. Very nice. Uh, I mentioned uh, Neil Stevenson earlier with Cryptonomicon. Uh, I'm rounding the corner on uh, my revisit for the first time in 20 years or so of his book, The Diamond Age. And uh, like so much of his work, it is so far ahead of its time. It is prescient about, um, uh, and forgive me if I've mentioned this on this program already, but, but um, in an age where people are recoiling from social media because they realize that, uh, that when you just blurt out everything you think, uh, sometimes things come back to haunt you. Uh, the Diamond Age takes place in a post-abundance society where nanobots can do anything you want. And um, as a result, there are various societies that choose to live in certain ways, uh, one of which is predominantly to live as Victorians. So as a result, uh, you uh, propriety, your reputation are sacrosanct. And uh, uh, knowing that anybody can find anything out about you at all times causes people to engage in slow motion Jane Austen style courtships. And um, uh, even when you go visit someone, because you're probably covered in nanobots, they go through the Victorian ritual of having you wait in a sitting room uh, when, when really what they're doing is they're sending their nanobots to scrub off any malicious nanobots that might be on your body. Uh, and uh, it, 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 along the way, essentially, a artificially intelligent iPad is invented that ends up in um, uh, an interesting character's hand. Uh, it's just so ahead of its time. And, and I remember finding it so challenging and mind blowing the first time I read it. But now 20 something years later, uh, I get to the chapter where it's a, a whole allegory about Turing machines using chains and stuff. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. But, uh, but, but brilliant. Nonetheless, uh, it's a really, really fun read. And the audiobook is well performed. This is the first time I'm doing the audiobook, So it's, it's worth, worth the trip. Have you guys heard this yet more examples of how the nerds have won? <laughs> We've won. Yeah. yeah. Here's no, listen to this. So hot celebrity couple, Timothy Chalamet and Kylie Jenner of the, Kardashian Jenner empire according to gossip reports what began their relationship is that Kylie Jenner huge Dune fan really <laughs> according to gossip reports whether or not look and I the nerds win either way I mean because either I, she is actually a big Dune fan and and by the way books books not moving right right uh uh or they believe that the, the Kardashian Jenner empire believes that they can curry favor in the world by, by baking being... her as a Dune fan. I would totally either buy way. It. The nerds win. Uh, I, I I don't know if, if if she's there for the technology of the ornithopters or the psychedelics of the spice, or for the idea of reading a book that is about being of House Jenner <laughs> and doing battle with other houses. Well, there we go. There we go. Uh, I, I, I just, I want to touch on something, Brian, about, I, my thing about some genre stuff, we're like, in the future, these people are going to decide to live, live like this. I'm always like, are there kids into this? Are they like, mom, dad, this is really stupid. You know, I'm going to go outside my hoverboard while you go carry on like this. Uh, well, and that, that is in the book. And in fact, one of the, there's two siblings, one who uh, does not go into Victorian society or Vickies as they call them. Uh, the other one does. And, um, uh, and it, there is, it is mentioned that, that one of the core lessons is this kind of indoctrination of like, this is why we live this way because blank, blank and blank. And otherwise, you know, there's just too much of everything and there has to be some kind of structure. And so we chose this, you know, out of nowhere because it, does blank, blank, and blank, and blank. And that's why we all live this way. And, you know, some people can choose to say, you know, uh, F off to polite society. But uh, but at that point, it's like, you don't, it's a bit like, you know, leaving a religion almost. But uh, it's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it does a fair job of addressing that point. Cool. Here we go. Uh, I got to pick. This is a, a sh maybe lighter fare. Uh, I, I have the Apple Arcade thing, and they added a new game the other day called Finity. 
It's fun. It's like uh, uh, it's like so you so you got to scroll. It's like the uh, what is it? Uh, one of those sliding puzzles. Uh, it, it's a sliding puzzle game. <laughs> it's kind of. It's, yeah, you want to know what the thing I had when and I was five, yeah. and we're done. <laughs> yep. All it's right. a sliding puzzle game. Yeah. Sliding it's puzzle great. Game. Three match threes. Uh, um, really well designed. It's on Apple Arcade. Finity, check it out. Finity, fam. <laughs> Andrew, my pick is I watched uh, went down sort of a, a Pee Wee Herman Paul Rubens mm. uh, dive to sort of check out some of the clips and interviews that he's done. Uh, you know, we, we lost Paul Rubens not too long ago, and it was great to see the outpouring. I mean, he was the kind of person, like, I barely knew him, and I would get, you know, a happy birthday text from him because he was just that kind of guy. He would, I'd sat there in his kitchen and watched him spend, you know, 15 minutes sending out little happy birthdays to people. He was just really, and then you, once he passed, unfortunately, but you heard so many people talked about that, about how he just was so good at just remembering anybody, even people he just barely knew. And uh, I decided my wife told my wife we need to watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And, you know, we're halfway through, and I can tell you it holds up. And there was a story that Paul told about when he went to go write that. By the way, he co wrote it with Phil Hartman. I forget who the other writer is, but this is Phil Hartman co wrote this. He, Paul's like, we didn't, I know how to write screenplays. So I got Sid Field's book, Screenplay, which is like (laughs) considered like the, the, the generic one. I did that. And he's like, He's like, yeah, on page 30, my bike gets stolen. On page 60 in my script, I get it back. He's like, I literally just followed it point That's by point. awesome. And it works. It really, really works. Because you look at one of the things they did that was so brilliant is, you know, you have this character, this goofy, you know, could be a super nice, sweet guy. Very early on, you see his mean streak when he goes to beat up Clarence and he snaps at his friends is the idea that they can give sides to that. And I thought, like, yeah, this is a, such a really, really they, taking that character from the stage, from the theater for grown ups yeah. to its different appearances and refine it to the point that what you get on screen is just a great, 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 well thought out character. I um, I told the story, I think, when he died, but uh, I was a huge Pee Wee's Playhouse fan, obsessed with Pee Wee's Playhouse as a, as, a, as a child. And so my mom buying me anything that had a Pee Wee's name on it goes to Blockbuster and brings back. Uh, the HBO special, <laughs> uh, uh, which is not not for children, but still has all the characters that y- you know and love. Also co-written by Phil Hartman. Uh, they were they were Groundlings uh, uh, partners at, at at the time. But uh, I rewatched that, and the the comedic just explosion from that uh, that that show is just it's electric. It's it, it is it is something special. Even and I remember watching it as a kid, and I'm like, all right, well, I don't get half these jokes, but Pee Wee's there. <laughs> this is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's. I think we we were talking about it. Uh, uh, T- Terry the pterodactyl comes in and it has this line where it's set setting up what will eventually be the kind of uh, uh, thing throughout the show. Is Pee Wee wants to learn how to fly. And uh, Perry, Terry the Pterodactyl just goes, you can't fly, Pee-wee. And he's like, like, oh, no, I really want to, though. And it just beat. And this whole show has been insane, nothing but energy. The first time that there's a dead moment, just a beat for the puppet Pterodactyl to just go, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... Oh, when, when, when you have a show on a line like that where no moment, no energy is wasted, everything, you know exactly where it goes, it's so special. And, and Paul Rubens was such an amazing, magnetic uh, uh, performer. That show begins with him just playing with toys, him just doing gags. It's just like, like and dumb, like, squeeze the, 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 uh, the rubber doll and the eyes pop out. And it's just the opener is him just going like, ah, ah, and like it's <laughs> cr- crushes, just atomic bombs through the crowd. So good. Yeah. Uh, R.I.P. Paul. Uh, R.I.P. You are missed, man. There is a ton of YouTube content on there, by the way. Interviews, stuff there. It's really, he is a, he was a very kind of private person, a very, very, very deep thinker, though, about stuff. And, you know, just, just need to see a lot of these interviews and some of him stuff talking about stories he has. 
Yeah, I sat in that dude's kitchen for hours listening to stories that, like, I'm still trying to remember everything that I heard because it's just he's been in the business forever and been an icon and all that. And so I, I think, you know, watching just seeing so much more of it, it's just been amazing. Yeah. Unfortunate circumstances. But anyhow, gentlemen, it's been after. All righty, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here in the live stream. Yeah, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, after we go off the stream, uh, 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 did, uh, did, did you happen to forward Andrew, the uh, Mr. Show clip that you forwarded me? No. I, I think that would be one minute well spent. <laughs> sure, yes. Uh, uh, after we're off the air. <laughs> Bri Brian, yeah. Brian, wanted, wanted, <laughs> Brian thought of a YouTube video wants to play it for Andrew, but we have to get off because it contains a lot of cursing. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for joining us here on a Friday. We'll be back next week with... All of the shows that you know and love. Port Killers is back on Monday. Brian and I are holding down the fort. Great night. All sorts of good stuff. All that stuff. Bye. Yep. <laughs>